Now, if you have children, there's every chance they'll spend every spare second they have playing Zombie Splatter 7 or some other such computer game. But what about more traditional board games? Kids these days say they're not interested in such games, but I believe they would be if they were bigger and involved cars. To prove our point, we've come here to the countryside. And on the board game front, we shall start with a classic. A game where two players try and guess where each other's ships are and then blow them up by firing missiles at them. It's a simple game, and as such, if you want to play it with cars, you don't need much. In fact, all you need is a massive former Cold War airfield with enough tarmac to accommodate the board for your board game. With a big enough slab of airfield, you can then lay out your grid onto which you can place your battleships. And all you need for that is several thousand pounds worth of old cars. But not any old cars. This stretch limo, for example, may have seen active service on hundreds of hen nights, but it makes the perfect aircraft carrier. And then there's this Toyota Prius. Its electric engine makes it perfect as a submarine, silent running. And then there's this Chrysler PT Cruiser convertible. There is no naval equivalent for this car. But who cares if we blow it up, because it is, after all, crap. And speaking of blowing up, we now come to the missiles. For these, you need a car that is frightening and lethal. A car that strikes fear into other motorists. And what better car could there be for this job than the magnificent G-Wiz? All I needed now was an opponent, a board game veteran. A man who thinks Call of Duty is a visit to the lavatory. That's excellent, Hammond. You've thought of everything. Oh, I have. Containers as the fence. It's got a fireman in case things get out of hand. Health and safety bloke to stop us blowing ourselves up. Cars that look exactly like ships. The lot. But how are you going to fire the missiles at the cars? Ah, well, that is the real genius in my plan. Easy, powerful, and proven. Fire the Gee Whiz missiles with the movie cannon. You reckon that's accurate enough? Well, it's a cannon. No, no, but you've got to hit a specific square. You aim the cannon. You adjust the trajectory and elevation. But you reckon you can work that out? It's a cannon. To shut James up, I took one of the spare cars to demonstrate a practice shot. Right, we're all set. It's fully charged, pressure's good. Fire! I had a better idea for the weapons launching system. So there you go, you see. You call out the grid reference that you want, and the driver just manoeuvres the jib exactly over that square and then drops the G-Wiz missile. It is absolutely unerringly accurate. I like that. And like everything else I've done here with all this stuff, this is all things you can do at home in your garden. With the giant containers making sure neither of us could see what the other was doing, James and I moved our battleships into place. And with the board laid out, it was time to play. Right, the Hen Knight limos each require two hits to be sunk. Both the motorhomes, they each require two hits to be sunk as well. And then my Prius and your PT Cruiser, they each require one to be sunk. We've got ten G-Wiz missiles each, five hits needed to win. Got it? Yes, right. Having won the toss, James would be first to fire. But I had a cunning plan to thwart him. What I've done is put a couple of my ships right out on the edges because James will think Hammond's a bit thick and it's a typically amateurish tactic to put your ships on the edge so that's what he'll have done but then he'll think hang on even Hammond's not that thick he just wants me to think he's thick so he'll have put his cars in the middle James will then not go for the edges he'll go for the middle 
but my ships will be at the edges. It's like a double or even a triple bluff. Now, Hammond is a bit thick, really, so I reckon he'll have put his all around the edges. D2, please. Fire! Hit on your limo on D2, thank you, your shot. Red crane driver, I'd like C4, please. C4. Fire! <laughs> That's a miss. C4, miss. Back to my original theory. Hammond will have gone along the edge, I'm pretty confident of that. So is it there or is it there? Green crane driver, fire at D1. Fire! Oh! Yes! You sank my limousine! One sinking to me, a miss for Admiral Hammond. And you've overdone the explosives. One plan would be, if you're playing this at home, do it on a day when there's a lot of barbecues in the area. That way people will just think, well, yeah, they're just... It's a big barbecue they're having next door. With my aircraft carrier gone and James's fleet unscathed, I had to break my duck. I'd like you to hit B2, please. <laughs> ah! B2... What? Well, there's no... Where are they? Just got a feeling. B1. B1, please. <laughs> Red crane driver, can I have square A1? Fire! Oh, 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 oh! Yes! Come on! Oh, you are on the run. That is it. Do you want to give up? You've sunk my cruiser. So that's a big red kill on A1. Boom! But James wasn't taking this lying down. C3. Fire! Yes! You hit my submarine, my invisible silent running priors. <laughs> I am losing badly. I've scored only one hit, he's scored three. But then the game started to turn as James had a run of three straight misses. Fire! <laughs> it was a miss! Ah! Thank you, I'm closing down my options. Close your options down further still if you were to hit rather than miss. Which was exactly what I was now doing. B3, please. A3, please. Yes! You've sunk my battleship. I am raining down destruction on your dwindling fleet of doomed ships, you loser. Aha! No, I'm not losing. We're neck and neck. Annoyingly, James was right. I still had my battleship Winnebago, and he still had his stretched aircraft carrier, both of which needed two hits to destroy. It was May's turn to play. B2. Critical stage of the game now. I hit now and I'm in trouble. Fire! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I shouldn't feel so good, but it does. Oh. It's going to be here. Red crane, target C1, please, C1. Fire! Hard luck, Horatio Hammond. Oh. All I've got to do now 
get inside Richard Hammond's mind. An awful place, admittedly, but if I can just get in there for a second, which way has he put it? There and there, there and there, there and there. C2. That'll be a miss. <clears throat> that, Captain May, was a miss! <sighs> However, while James now had to choose between just two squares, I was looking at a choice of six. Red Crane, target C2, please. C2. Red Crane. Fire! I meant C3! I meant... Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! That mistaken shot wasn't just a hit. It had changed everything. Because I said C2, when actually I meant three, in case it was there, that's a kill, bang, which means it has to be there. Can't be here or here. So I've got him. James, you do know what that means, don't you? Yes, I've just worked it out. I've got to get this right, otherwise you've won. Do you want to surrender? No, I don't. So, I was now faced with the choice that would decide the game. A2 or B3? A2, B3, what would Richard Hammond do? Green crane driver. Oh, God. Come on, you bewildered old Spaniel. Miss. Right. Fire! Hammond! Best of three. 